Uh, we'll call the meeting of uh, October 3rd as control. We're ready. And can we have a roll call, please? Chaplain here. Colbert here. Evans here. Ozog. Tornatori here. And Zane here. Uh, I believe Chair Ozag is still somewhere, uh, either in Germany or, or somewhere not in DuPage County on vacation. So I wish you well. Do we have any public comment? There are none. Okay, we'll move on to approval of the minutes. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of Tuesday, so September 19th. Second. The motion and a second. Are there any additions, corrections, or deletions? Hearing none, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed minutes are approved. Moving on to procurement, I'll entertain a motion to approve 23-3088, a recommendation for approval of so contract moved. purchase to uh -huh. fleet safety supply, furnish and deliver Wheeland lighting products as needed for the Division of Transportation in the amount of $20,000. Not to exceed. Motion to second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. I'll entertain a motion to approve DTP 98-23. A recommendation for approval of an agreement to Leach, Tishman, so Escaldo, and Lampy to provide professional legal services to negotiate highway authority benefit agreement the applications as needed for the Division of Transportation for the period of December 1, 2023 through November 30th, 2025, for an agreement total not to exceed $80,000 as special assistant state's attorney. So, motion is there, was there a second? Yeah. So motion is second. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I'll entertain a motion to approve DTP 99. Yes, 23. A recommendation for an approval of an agreement for Leach, Dishman, Scalbo, and Lampy to provide professional legal services to assist with environmental issues as needed for the Division so of Transportation Sorry. for the period of December 1st, 2023 to November 30th, 2025. For an agreement not to exceed 80,000. <coughs> motion and a second. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I'll entertain a motion to approve DTP 100 23, a recommendation for approval of a contract to pay tax specialty coatings, furnish and deliver the icing liquids as needed for the Division of Transportation mm -hmm. for the period of November 1, 2023 through October 31st, 2025, for a contract total not to exceed $215,000. as a motion in a second. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, saying none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. We got to change orders. I'll update a motion to approve 233150 STV Incorporated PO number 5751 serve for professional construction engineering services for 87th Street at Woodward Avenue intersection of movements. Second. Revised Exhibit C for subcontinent millennia professional services. No change in contract encumbrance. It's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I entertain a motion to approve 233114, an amendment to purchase order number 6490 SCRV issued to Elmer Chicago Stone to dispose of clean construction demolition debris and uncontaminated soil as needed for the Division of so Transportation to increase the encumbrance in the amount of $5,140, resulting in an event contract total amount of $20,140. Motion and a second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I'll entertain a motion to approve 23-3059 TEP 4418A-21, amendment to resolution TEP 418-21, issued to AT&T Mobility for cellular and wireless services for various departments of the county of DuPage, increase the encumbrance in the amount of $60,000 for the Division of Transportation, resulting in an amended contract amount one million one hundred twenty-seven thousand nine hundred fifty dollars. There's a motion and a second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I'll entertain a motion to approve DTR 84-23 Willowbrook Corners Safe Routes to School Grant the application, so ensuring good. DuPage County's financial commitment. Is there a second? Motion to second. Any questions, comments on this? Yes, member of Thank you for doing this. This is a lot John Loper. These grants take a lot of work, so thank you for doing it. Yeah. So just reading it on the grant, it looks like the applications for this year were supposed to be in by October 1st of 2023. They were they were due yesterday and they were submitted. Oh, we got them in. Yes. yes. Oh, I thought we had to wait till this was done. So no. I'm like, oh, great. No, so Good. Thank, the, thank you. The thank chair you. actually signed the letter, uh, right. it, okay. which, which I had accepted. Okay, uh, okay, great. Uh, telling them that we uh, delivered on the 10th. Woohoo, that's great. Right. Okay, good. Thank you. 
Great. Any other questions? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. We're going to intergovernmental agreements. I'll entertain a motion to approve DTR 85 23, an intergovernmental agreement between the County of DuPage and the City of Darien for improvements on Lamont Road from 83rd Street to 87th Street and on 87th Street from Havens Drive to Lamont Road to establish the jurisdictional maintenance and energy responsibilities and costs with respect to traffic signals and street lighting. The motion and a second. Any questions? No second. No, no second. Who's the second? Okay. There's a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. We end to amending resolutions. I'll entertain a motion to approve 233164 DTR 29A 21. So moved. Amendment to DTR 298 21. An agreement between the County of DuPage, State of Illinois Department of Transportation, and Chicago State Fall and Pacific Railroad LLC doing business as Progressive Rail Incorporated for railroad crossing improvements along Europe Road between Seabreakport and Foster Avenue. There's a motion and a second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Information on a motion to receive and place on file DCP 17 is 23, a recommendation for the approval of a contract to a sell Inc. for annual subscription services for Bellissimo software integration between a sell online permitting software and Bluebeam <coughs> plan review software for the period of December 1, 2023. Through November 30, 2024, for contract total amount, and it would be $30,618. So Motion and a second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And the matter is received. I'm moving on to discussion. I understand we have one regarding the trails plan update and staff recommendations. All right. So Sid's going to give a presentation. Um, been something that we've been working on for quite some time. He'll provide a timeline and some background for some of the board members that might not have been around when we appreciated this. But today's focus is really on a couple things that we would um, like to get feedback from the committee in terms of some of the staff recommendations to implement in the plan before we release it for public comment. So with that, okay, I'll turn it over to Sid. Thanks, Chris. Uh, good morning, committee. Um, Nothing to add to that. Good summar summarization. So let's jump in. Next slide, please. So uh, right now in the trails plan process, we are currently in receipt of the draft and final plan. Uh, we've come to this committee a couple of times for input at various times, especially when we had trails plan engagement or public engagement sessions. Um, so thank you for your feedback throughout that, that uh, process. Next slide, please. So why we're here today, as Chris mentioned, um, we're here for feedback on our draft recommendations. What is the trails plan? This, just as a you know, quick summary, this is our update to the 2003 trails maintenance policy. It's a plan specifically for the maintenance and operations of the existing trail network under our responsibility today. It's not a capital improvement plan. We're not talking about new connections, but we are talking about ways that we can best manage the trails as they are today. Um, this framework that we're establishing, that we're seeking to establish, would be for current and future work. Um, as I mentioned before, we have had the 2003 Trails Maintenance Policy on the books for quite some time. Um, it required a little bit of update, so that's what we're going through right now. Um, and the 2008 DuPage County Bike Plan, that's some other work that we've done through the DOT. This is our capital improvement plan for future connections. Um, that we may be seeking to update in the future, but right now we're uh, just recognizing that that's there. Um, and we also have lots of work that we do with municipalities in partnership. Um, I believe I have it here that we have seven municipalities that have IGAs with us for uh, operations of portions of the trail throughout the page. Next slide, please. The plan as we have it has eight chapters. Um, today we're gonna be talking about five of them, signage and wayfinding, Partnerships, which represents agreements and permits. Um, healthy trails, which is environmental stewardship. Trail user experience, which that represents um, anything related to rules of the trails, trail etiquette, user safety in motion, and trail maintenance. Next slide, please. So we've got seven recommendations that we're gonna share with you guys today and we'd love to get your feedback on. First of which, is our planting guidelines. Right now we have an ordinance, 
ODT 036C-87 that provides guidelines for plans used on county highways. This ordinance is intended to encompass all the county highways. So this has recommended and prohibited plantings on the county highway network, but they also apply to the trail network, those prohibitions and recommendations. <laughs> There's also, I think under the, the third amendment to this ordinance, a Prairie Neighbors program that's been established, which enables adjacent property owners to, uh, to plant and manage landscaping on the trail network adjacent to their property. Uh, we have enabled that under permit. Our recommendation is to update this ordinance. <laughs> the reason for that is because some of the plantings that have been prohibited are actually very well suited to the trail system. You might be surprised to find out that birch, pin oak, catalpa, willow are some tree species that are prohibited on the entirety of the county highway network. But on the trail network, they might actually be fairly suitable. Um, there are also some prohibited plantings that should be on that list that aren't there, such as buckthorn and honeysuckle. So we're also recommending that the Prairie Neighbors Program be reoriented towards helping us find invasive species. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, in, in upcoming slides. But uh, we felt like that the way that it's currently constructed, it's it's not really as effective as it could be to help us with that fight. So with that, um, any discussion, any thoughts? Yes. I concur with you on all those points. So no. <laughs> Great. Um. <laughs> Thank you. Questions or comments? Okay, well, thank you. Okay, there they are, the invasive species. Buckthorn, honeysuckle, garlic mustard. Um, these have really taken over the trail environment. Um, they threaten the establishment of healthy trees and tree canopy, which throughout our trail plan process, we found that the public supports. Um, and constituents have generally expressed interest in helping us fight the invasive species. So we're recommending that we establish what's called an adaptive management plan. Through this plan, DOT would simply put, um, attempt new emerging ways to fight invasive species, learn from those, work with experts, and pivot as necessary. Our goal is that over time we would eradicate invasive plant species and replace them with native plantings. We want them to stop crowding out the new trees we want to plant on the trail network. But we also want to allow folks to help us remove them and replace them with native plantings, which we know are very popular. Thoughts? Mm. Yes. This is fascinating, actually, because I'm, I'm sitting here because I don't know a lot about the you know, trees and, and, and what's uh, healthy and what's invasive. And I don't know why I'm thinking like back to the old days where what if no human lived here and like these invasive species took over? How they wouldn't be here then. How does nature take care of that? You know, it's, I mean, nobody would be here to, I, I'm just wondering in my head, this would be a Google, deeper Google research on my part <laughs> tonight. So I, I might have to have to do the same. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Thank you, Sid, for your presentation. So how are you proposing that we start to eliminate those buckthorn honeysuckle? You got Tiesel pictured, but not on your list. And that, that's becoming really prevalent. It is. Um, so how do we get to, I know Forest Preserve has clear cut a lot of that in their forest preserves. Anything like that proposed for the trails? We've had some staff discussions about um, what the best way to approach that process might be. I think uh, starting small, uh, walking before you run for us, I think would be would be helpful. Um, engaging some of the experts. We have, as far as I know, we have at least two arborists on staff with the county that could help us determine the best way to manage any tree replantings in their place. Um, I think we want to work with volunteers because uh, we know that that volunteer groups such as the, the Friends of the Great Western Trail, mm -hmm. Illinois Prairie Path Corporation, are interested in helping us with those removals. And um, I think the use of hand tools, you know, just some loppers, you could get pretty far clearing out a lot of what's there. Um, so 
we've explored some, some of those ideas. We've kicked them back and forth as far as where to start, um, but we're certainly open to any other suggestions as well. I guess I have to express that I'm a little disappointed that you're talking about a start. <laughs> this is something that, in my opinion, should have been planned a while ago, and they're not going away on their own. Uh, only, you know, especially this time of year, the seeds that the birds carry for all of that stuff. Um, so I'll urge you to get ahead of this. So that would be my comments. Thank you. Number Zach. Yes. So is this something we're going to do on our own? Are we going to bring an outside firm in? I mean, I know you want to talk about clear cutting, but I guarantee you those neighbors who have houses on the, on the trails and we start clear cutting uh, there, it's... You can have Sheila talk to them because it will be, I mean, we, I know when we have cut in the past, it's been, I mean, not a good situation. So, I mean, are we looking at just like some of the invasive species spraying, bringing an outside firm in to do some small areas, see how it reacts and then go that way, kind of figure it out at that point? Yeah, um, we've, we've explored that. We've explored um, bringing in an outside firm to help us with that. Uh, you know, as far as I know, um, regarding the neighbors, the Chicago Regional Tree Initiative has recommended planting guidelines and species to replace that, that screen because I think they recognize that um, a lot of neighbors to trails like having the privacy. Oh, so yeah. we, we've thought about that and certainly understand that need. Okay. Yeah, we cut down a 40 foot tree and put in a 10 footer, there's gonna be some screen. There are no 40 yes. foot buckthorns though. Yeah. There just isn't. Uh, and so to Jim's point, I would say education, we've got to start education, educating people about why these invasives need to come out. Make a motion and put Sheila in charge of education. Here, they heard your cell phone number. I'm so glad you have the confidence in me to do something Oh, like I that. know what's going to happen to you. I'm just going to laugh. <laughs> If I could just add, I think that's the reason this topic is on here for discussion because we recognize the the balance between the evasives and, and getting rid of them in terms of allowing natural, more natural species. But at the same time, there are people at least eight months out of the year that enjoy that site screen from the path. So mm -hmm. the thought that staff discussed is find that location, do a pilot project. Let's not pick a residential area for our first one, but find some place to how we how can we manage this and learn from it. Um, we do have, uh, you might remember, we did bring forward um, the Arboretum grant to plant oaks. And so we've already talked to Stormwater um, on the role the DOT can play and how we can leverage more money for oaks. But that would start that, that's a District 6, just east of the, where the Prairie Path goes, uh, where one of the trails go up in over 59. Um, and identified that as maybe this is that first start, where we begin to say, okay, we're going to go with uh, native oaks and kind of use this as a, as a, as a first cut pilot project. Just a real quick question. Do you have to spray any chemicals to completely eliminate these invasive plants? Um, that is one option, uh, is, is application of any herbicide to uh, perhaps, for example, buckthorn um, application of herbicide is one option. Um, it would be an application either to the stump or to the bark, it would not be any kind of broadcast spray. Um, but there are other ways. They just require more management, more, more manpower. You can just keep cutting and cutting and cutting. You can remove the stump. So if it's like a residential area and people walk through there, I mean, you don't want it to be bad for their health or in that one. Understood. Okay. So I heard support for the recommendation. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Yes. Good luck. <laughs> Um, related to that, tree removals and tree replacement, excuse me, um, but we're starting with the subject of tree removals. So Dutch elm, emerald ash borer, other diseases and pests that are emergent have really affected the tree canopy significantly. It's been difficult for us to keep up with the replacement of those tree removals. Um, survey respondents through the trails plan indicated that they prefer the shaded and native, native plantings areas throughout the trail network. In fact, um, the, the tree line shaded areas were the one that most people prefer. Uh, very nice um, uh, relief from the sunlight during the, the summer seasons. So 
Our recommendation is to establish a process for systematically replacing those removed trees. We already do this now, but we're talking about systematically identifying locations such as the, the pilot project we're talking about through the Oak Ecosystems Grant with the Arboretum to, as we remove the invasive species, replace those with, uh, with native trees and native plants. It sounded like we had some support for that for that uh, via this last slide that we talked about, but are there any other questions or thoughts? Yes. So is there, well, I don't know. I mean, you guys have experts on, on board, but is there enough diversified trees so that if another disease hits a certain species of trees that we have enough of the other kinds of trees to be resistant to that? Currently in some locations, yes. In some locations, no. Um, and, and you can kind of see as you move through the trail network, which areas have been hit by which diseases. Uh, we have a lot of elm trees in some locations, ash trees in others um, that, that have all you know, been suffering. But we have other locations where there is a diversity of, of oak trees and um, uh, box elder. There's a lot of box elder, uh, you know, stuff like that. So um, it, it kind of depends on where you're at. So is that part of the replacement plan, though? It's like if, you're, if there's like a bunch of trees or something, you place it with something that's a lot different so that, you know, we're going to have some more varieties so that not, not what, what whole species of trees wipes out that whole area. Yeah, as, as far as I'm aware, uh, the, the recommended best practice is to, to diversify those tree species. So we would follow that. So we can get our support on this as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Next slide. Yeah, Trail user experience, uh, mode restrictions. Currently, we have an ordinance on the books that is the prohibition of motorized vehicles on the trail system. Um, this prohibits specifically unauthorized motor vehicles. There are exceptions for, uh, for maintenance vehicles, for emergency vehicles. And um, through amendment, we also have exceptions for people with disabilities who use uh, personal mobility devices. So they specifically call out motorized wheelchairs. We are recommending updating this ordinance to reflect both um, updated state law and uh, the, the emergence of micromobility and e-bikes. <clears throat> there are plenty of e-bike users that are out there on the trails today. Um, and there has been a lot of concern among other agencies, not just our partners in the region, but nationwide about how that use of e-bikes could be a safety concern. And so we want to do more work to figure out where those safety concerns might be and how we could regulate that in order to effectively uh, preserve the safety of those moving along the trail. Yes. I'll, uh, I'll add support for this because I was just at a trail yesterday and there were some people on some e-bikes that were going really fast and not even watching out for cars. They were going fast in the parking lot even. And I, I really support the use of e-bikes for a lot of people because it's it might be the only way they can actually get on a bike. They need some assistance, but um, yes. I do think we need to balance it with security. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, thank you. And actually, actually yesterday I saw an e-bike actually drive on on the road on Maple Avenue, so they're like driving on the streets too. So they are kind, they are fast. And I was like, should it be on the road? Should it be on the side? But I don't know where it should be. But yeah, I think we have to watch for the safety of people. That I agree. Yeah, it's, we want to encourage them. But we have to. We don't want anybody being run over by an e-bike. Yeah, there's various classes of e-bikes. Yeah. Um, the, the the class three is the 20 miles an hour, and that's probably what you might see more often on the roadway system when they do migrate to the trail system. Um, the state law that Sid was what was referring to actually, you know, takes identifies an e-bike as a non-motorized vehicle, even though it has a motor. Um, so change the title so now they are allowed on the pass system. And so until we take a formal action in terms of eliminating them or identifying which we would allow or not allow, um, so that's going to be the plan recommendation is to say, okay, now we've got these out there. We've heard from users. We have the surveys. Now um, the plan may recommend that we evaluate it, but any formal change will come through committee board structure for county, for county code. Yes. So for the e-bikes, are any of those classes licensable for surface roads? That I 
I don't know. I mean, a bike is allowed on the road, right? Share, share, right, right? right. So, yeah. So it's a bike. Uh, I guess if we're going to push them off of the prairie path, they're going to end up somewhere. You, yeah, that's kind of where I was going with that. Wait, are they subject to um, traffic laws? I, I haven't looked into the well, bikes are mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. They are. So they then, so then right technically, right. technically, they don't belong on the trails or the paths either. Ugh. I mean, I can make that. They do by law. They can be prohibited. Yeah. They specifically. absolutely can be there right now until we prohibit them. We can prohibit them completely yeah. or just a class. You right. can decide to prohibit S3, but not class one and two. This would be a state legislature issue though. Maybe we could bring it up in uh, the state legislative yeah. the legislative yeah. committee. No. I think we I think we have yeah. the ability. Yeah. Yeah. The state law established the class okay. one, two, three yeah. and, and differentiated them. Yeah. Okay. Now the county yeah. at some point can look at that and yeah. say class. A, B, or C is or is not allowed. Yeah, yeah. no, I agree. I agree with the safety issue with you know people getting run over by e bikes. So yeah, definitely. We'll include language in our plan that really just identifies the issue, but obviously it's going to take a little bit more effort and coordination. I see. I believe said you've researched and found out for some of our partner agencies, Forest Preserve, etc. They've begun to limit or reduce the class of vehicle allowed on our system. Yeah, uh, the forest preserves in the region have generally established a speed limit. Um, generally, that's been 20 miles per hour, though I think the Kenry County Conservation District is at 15 miles an hour. Um, I, from my understanding, we don't have the authority to establish a speed limit on the trails, but uh, but we do have the authority to regulate who can use the trails uh, by mode. Yes. Just another question. Those larger class three e-bikes, do they, because the trails are mostly like that little gravel. <laughs> Does that have any impact on the wear and tear of those of our trails too with the bigger um, e-bikes as far as maintenance or anything? That's a good question. Um, I, I have not been aware of any concerns about impact to the trail surface. Uh, those bikes are heavier, but is it enough to, to make that much of a difference? I'm not sure. Okay, I just curious. Good question, thank you. And what about enforcement of these restrictions? Who's Who's going to go out there and ticket them? So we would have to we would have to coordinate with sheriff, with local police departments, um, in order to determine what that enforcement is going to look like. The local police departments have the jurisdiction over the trails. They in some parks do. If they happen to be yeah, in that municipality. Yes, some they do. I, I'm just going to guess that police probably aren't going to spend a lot of time on the trails ticketing somebody. Going over the speed limit. Oh, it's a nice day. Yeah. 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 They don't want to be in the car or the office. Okay. I mean, I'm just thinking, you know, I mean, we're going to put all these plans in place, but if, if it's not going to do any good, then. Right. Okay. Uh, Chip? Yeah. I just, you know, I thought we deemed our trail system part of our county highway system, but we can't enforce a speed limit on it. I don't under. Yeah. So two of the trail systems are uniquely defined as county highways um, that be the Illinois Prairie Path and the Great Western Trail. And uh, so that would be a question I think that we have to bring They're back. kind of mixed because we also deem them recreational paths and we have a lot of tour community because of that. Okay. We use them more as multi-use paths than we do as a road. Right. So they form more to that. But under the state statute, it's very limited what we can do. We basically could pass an ordinance and it's a trespassing. Uh, and that's kind of how the old one was written as trespassing. We can't put a speed limit. Okay. Well, I just thought it'd be nice to be uniform with the Forest Preserve or whatever they're doing. That we kind of, you know, all of a sudden you take a take a left and go on another path, you know, another trail, and you're on a Forest Preserve trail. And then there's a different set of rules. So definitely, we would sign whatever and then identify people that the class, you know, at the appropriate locate trailheads, you know, what's allowed, what's not allowed. And, and again, it's going to be that, like anything else, you change your speed limit, you up, you increase your selective enforcement, and you have some presence out there, um, and you try to kind of be visible initially. That, that <laughs> okay. All right, sounds like a plan. I can be certified as a deputy sheriff in my retirement. There you go. That's it. <laughs> Party five. Party five. All right. <laughs> we'll give you a call for a public engagement. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks a lot. Okay. Um, it's got three more to go, so we'll try to breeze through. Um, one of the issues we have with trail maintenance is that um, some of the local agencies that have agreements with us perform snow removal. Um, this results in 
accelerated degradation of the trail surface, especially for limestone screen surfaces. So one of the recommendations we're going to make as part of this plan is we're no longer going to recommend snow removal. Um, that's already allowed in a couple of our agreements. So in addition to that, we would be seeking to streamline those trail maintenance IGAs with municipalities in order to streamline those, those maintenance conditions. Yes. Can we groom those trails as opposed to snow removal? Like downhill ski, they groom to compact snow, makes it easier passable for cross country skiers, walkers. I know like I use the prairie paths a lot and in the wintertime I don't after a snow because they're virtually impassable unless you can kind of those trails to be smoother. And then we all look at a shield on a trail here in January. <laughs> um, you know, that's a good question. I think it depends on, on what the technique is for the grooming. Um, as long as, as we're rolling over the, the surface mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, scraping it or producing any friction, I think we would be open to that. Yes. Um, so I guess what what it would look like then would be like if it's snowing and icy for, it could be even a month that there's no, there's just snow and ice left on the trail and it would be up to anybody who uses the trail to kind of like walk all over it. And um, are we gonna have residents that live near the trail doing this? Uh, I know they do this kind of near where I live sometimes, um, just a resident who wants it cleared will bring his snow plow out there and do it himself. Uh, are we are we subject to that? And is, is there any liability to leaving the snow on the trail, snow and ice on the trail? If I can answer that. that. We're much better leaving it than touching it. As soon as we touch it, there's 100% liability. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah. I am in support of this. Good. Good. I just want to clarify. It's we don't, the DOT does not plow or groom. It is the one or two isolated municipalities where they might be paved trails through their community. You know, we have the unique situation. We just did an IGA with Wheaton. The Illinois Prairie Path follows essentially their sidewalk network, which is a, you know, get access to the train and stuff. So um, we just need to be careful when we have these IGAs and we pass any rules that we recognize that, that the, the designation of the path is long. These these concrete areas or paved areas through communities. So I think it's just a matter of don't we don't like it when it's on a surface like like limestone okay. because then we're out the next year when we get complaints about how how deteriorated it is because of the activities um, as opposed to a plow the surface. Okay. 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 Next slide. Um, signage and wayfinding. So we are proposing some rebranding of the trails. Right now, we have the three trails under our jurisdiction, the Illinois Prairie Path, Great Western Trail, Southern DuPage Regional Trail. Um, and they each have rather distinct logos. We want to streamline those to reflect more like what the county logo looks like. So you can probably see the ring, the emblem in the middle, make it legible. Um, one of the issues that we've had with the Southern DuPage Regional Trail is that the current logo is not legible from the road. Um, the lettering definitely needs to change. It's not as recognizable of a logo. Um, but with regards to these other two logos, these are established color schemes and, and symbology that we want to, to be respectful of because this is what the trail users uh, recognize. We would only change these on our signs though. We're not going to go out and we're not going to replace anybody else's signs. The Prairie Path has their own signs, especially their own logo uh, for their own materials. And we're not proposing to change this, but for our signs, purely for wayfinding purposes. Thoughts? Yes. Well, can we just have a sign that has the county logo on top and then the other one on the bottom? I mean, do we have to change the actual signs? Like, do we, are we restricted to just one circle? We're not necessarily restricted. Um, but it is easier to recognize. Readability. Yeah. Well, who, what would the process be? Some have, have someone design it. Like, so say for the Southern DuPage County Regional Trail, are we looking to have someone redesign it? We would be using uh, these, these logos and um, our signage and wayfinding plan that we're recommending would implement that. Oh, so you're saying that's the logo we want. 
Yes. Okay, I thought it was a, uh, that's the one that we have and we don't want it anymore. So we want to keep what, what you have on there. Yeah, these are these are the ones that are proposed. Oh, okay. Okay, that was good. <laughs> okay, great. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, last one. Encroachments. What is an encroachment? Um, we have many instances in which there are unauthorized uses or occupations of the county highway on the trail network. And in particular, this has been a, a, a difficulty for us on our rail trail network, the Great Western Trail and the Illinois Prairie Path. Um, typically, these encroachments might include permanent structures, pools, fences, sheds, um, unauthorized landscaping or clearing, vehicle storage, or material storage. We've had parking lots that encroach, we've had uh, auto repair services that encroach. So we're recommending that we procedurally inventory, categorize, and address encroachments. We have inventoried before, but we want to come up with a procedure that's going to enable us to establish a process for either removal replacement, or bringing those up to acceptable standard. Thoughts? Yes. Oh, so is this just a vial? Do we get code enforcement to go, go out there? Is this, is this our jurisdiction for code enforcement? Not for zoning. Okay. Okay. Not for building and zoning, because you can track it with Excel, right? <laughs> Create okay. a file and you know follow that process. But who, I guess, who would do it then? I, I think. It's a trust. It's a trust. So it's a quasi-criminal or criminal citation, I guess, enforced by whatever. Okay. So municipality or sheriff. Staff would identify it, just kind of track it, and then who? So I guess we would start off by notice, give notice to the person, and ask. For them. Okay. Yes. All right. So is this now I'm gonna? Is this could, could we kind of do something like? Like our clean and lean on the trail, kind of like, you know, we're telling them, hey, you got to clean it up, right? Or get off the thing. You know what I'm saying? So it, in a way, you cannot. You cannot. Okay. Because it's not subject to our zoning. Oh, okay. Okay. That's all unincorporated. Okay. 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 Most of these are municipalities. Okay. Yeah, but I think, I think we can send a yeah, notice yeah, to totally, people yes. as opposed to just yes. going out and yes. writing tickets yes. or whatever. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah, I think this needs to be done. I, I mean... Do. People think it's an extension of their backyard or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was at the forest, forest preserve, I mean, you couldn't put a bird feeder on their, their property mm -hmm. and they would send a ranger out to, to basically give you a ticket. So, yeah. I mean, and also it's a liability issue too. If somebody were going on that property and get hurt, we're ultimately responsible for it. So, yeah, I think you're going to just go through an inventory. Everybody is approaching right now. And mm -hmm. like, yeah, I think it has to be done. Mm -hmm. So that would be, this is the recommendation of the plan to do a next step inventory, but also to bring back to this committee. Here's the list, here what they are. Um, I think in some of our research, we found um, you know, 1987 ordinance, this Illinois Prairie Path or return Prairie Path nature or something like that. So some encroachments identified or some plantings identified as encroachment may in fact be something we can grandfather in, right? Um, and so we have some latitude. So I wanna make sure that um, um, that as we look at these, we kind of look at our other policies in place and take care of those that are um, the appropriate ones that we need to bring forward with a recommendation. Okay, sounds like a plan. So all well. yeses. Thank you. Um, Thank you. This is a quick wrap up. Uh, we'll be back with the draft plan next transportation committee um, to release for public comment with your guys' approval. And um, if we get that, that'll be 30 days. We'll Re-engage our stakeholder groups and final staff review and county board approval will take place over the winter. So thanks for your patience, guys. This is a long one. Thank that you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Very informative. Longer than my pledges. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to move on to old business. Any old business? Any new business? Oh, just an announcement, if I may, really quick. We don't um, have announcements, sorry. Well, I just wanted to remind everybody, since we don't have public transit anymore, but the Railroad Safety Council is having their um, biannual conference, and it's um, about railroad trespassing and suicide prevention, so it's on October 18th, and I think you guys should have got an email, so anybody that's interested, I just want to give it a little shout out to maybe sign up and go. They're always really very good conferences, so. Okay, thank you. Anything else? 
under older. Now we were going to talk about winter preparedness, but we got the development committee ready to come in. We're a little bit late with that, so we're going to do it maybe next Winter, year. Winter's coming. Winter's coming, but not until November. If we, if, we, if, we, <laughs> yeah, if we can postpone this a couple of weeks, then we'll postpone winter a couple of weeks. Come so back to 17th. It's 85. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no further business. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, sure. Thank you.